Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New Teeth Now webinar. And we are so excited to jump into this conversation with you um, all about dental implants. So I'm joined here tonight with Dr. Richards, um, and we're going to be talking about the New Teeth Now full mouth implant procedure. Um, so we'll just jump right into it. All right. So Dr. Richards is a board certified oral and maxillofacial surgeon since 1982, so he has well over 40 years of dental implant experience and he is an innovator of new teeth now um, so do you want to kind of explain why you think this you know procedure sure, is so important sure. to provide yeah. your patients I can make some opening comments and, yeah uh, so you know we know that uh, you didn't invite friends over tonight to uh, watch new teeth now webinar as entertainment uh, you're on here for a reason either you have a problem or a loved one may have a problem, such as a mouthful of bad teeth, uh, periodontal disease, sick and tired of dentures, that's a big one, sick and tired of dentures, or you may have been told by another surgeon somewhere that you don't have enough bone for traditional implants. So whatever the reason, we wanna make this simple and we want to answer your questions because you're here to get information and you can't get information unless you ask the questions that you want the answer to. So uh, Bianca and I are going to be here. We're going to answer your questions to the best of our ability, let you see how simple this procedure really is when it's broken down into its components. So with that being said, why don't we, uh, yeah. we kind of take off. We've got a little package program. We can break out of that anytime we need to, to uh, you know, answer something that you have. But yeah. we have some basic information that we feel is important for you to have. And we'd like, we'll get that over to you and, and then we'll answer any further questions. Perfect, so um, we'll start with a, um, an animation of a fixed <clears throat> upper hybrid. So what, is, what are the viewers looking at here? Well, this is a full upper set of teeth. It's uh, like a bridge. It's implant supported, which means it's fixed. Fixed means it doesn't come in and out. Upper, obviously, is the upper jaw and it's a hybrid. And the reason it's a hybrid is because the position of the teeth and the position of the implants don't have to coincide. A lot of people who come in with no bone, there's, there's, there's no bone to put the implants where the teeth need to be. Teeth may, may need to be way out there, and there's no bone way out there. So we put the implants where the bone is located, and we put the teeth where the teeth need to be in the person's face in order to look good when they smile and when their faces relax and so their teeth come together when they eat. So the hybrid, <clears throat> as opposed to crown and bridge work, if you had fixed upper crown and bridge work, you would have a situation where the implants are directly where the teeth need to be, directly where the teeth need to be. If you have a fixed hybrid bridge, you have a situation, as I said earlier, no, I'm repeating myself, where the implants are not where the teeth are necessarily, they could be, but not necessarily, because of periodontal bone loss, because of atrophy under dentures, because of a traumatic situation. Maybe you were in a car accident or something of that nature. So anyway, this is the primary thing that New Teeth Now is all about, a fixed upper hybrid restoration. It's a prosthetic device that goes into your mouth. It's fixed, it doesn't come out, it's screw retained. It looks like teeth, it chews like teeth, but it doesn't feel like individual teeth. And they work very well, they're very nice, Yes. very aesthetic. Uh, although this is primarily a functional thing, there is a secondary cosmetic uh, benefit to this procedure because these teeth do look very good. They are beautiful. Yeah, they really are. Um, and then here's a visual of the lower yeah. hybrid, so the same exact <clears throat> concept here. Same exact concept. I really don't need to really say anything more about a yeah. fixed lower. It's just the same, um, same concept except in the lower jaw. Exactly. Um, and to kind of go over the overview <laughs> of what it would look like to have new teeth now surgery. Um, so first thing in the morning, you'll come in. Um, we will put you 
under general anesthesia, so you'll be in a deep sleep for a pain-free procedure. Once you're completely asleep, um, first, Dr. Richards will remove your teeth if, if um, you still have your natural teeth, so they're extracted. Then he'll place all of the implants that you need. Um, and then while the patient is still asleep, we'll take impressions for the lab upstairs to customize the teeth. And then the patient will wake up um, in a private recovery room, and while they're resting, our in-house lab is fabricating and creating the teeth. Um, and then the teeth are placed in the patient's mouth and adjusted in the afternoon, and they are able to go home that same day. Um, so the, the whole procedure is done in one day. It's hard to add too much to that. <laughs> I mean, this is some of the basic information that, that you, the viewer, needs to understand because uh, this is how it works. You come in about 7, 7, 15 in the morning, and you leave about 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon with a set of teeth in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, there's a lot in between uh, that, has, that we have to do to make this work correctly. It takes a solid team effort, solid yes, team effort between our laboratory technicians, the restorative dentist, our nurse anesthetists who provide the anesthesia, of course the surgical procedures that Dr. Kirkpatrick and I provide, and our assistants who we wouldn't be able to do this without the, the ladies that work for us. So you're, you know, you're looking at maybe 15, 20 people that it takes to pull this off in one day. And this is all we do. This is all I do every day. And in the afternoon, I talked to a couple of more people who are interested in doing this. So, you know, the bottom line is, if you're looking to get this done, you need to seek out the people who do it the best. And the people who do it the best are the ones that do it the most. And we are the ones that do it the most across the entire country. Yes. And that, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. And, uh, We'll move on through this program and uh, answer your questions. Perfect. Um, so this kind of illustrates, so we have, you know, everything's done in one day as far as the procedure. It's also all in one office. So um, our surgeons, our dental lab, and our restorative doctors are all in-house, um, either at our Lakeland location or our Village's location. Um, everything's, you know, under one roof for the best ability um, for us with communication and also the benefit of the patient as well. Um, so can you, can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on why it's so good to have everything together? <laughs> well, you just come to one physical facility. You drive up here and everything is done here. We don't outsource anything. Uh, there's no getting up and driving down to the dentist office after the surgeon does something because the dentist is here, the laboratory is here, the surgeon is here, everybody's here. We can all confer amongst ourselves if there's a problem that we have to deal with, we can work it out, work it out right then. You don't have to wait for an appointment five days from now. So all in one office, all under one roof to get everything done on complicated procedures such as this, it's the only way to do it. The old traditional way is a big fail. That's just all there is to it. From a communication standpoint, that just doesn't work anymore. Our clients have a higher level of expectation now. They have done significant research when they come to see us. And uh, I've seen it over the last 20 or 30 years, the level of expectation that people have when they come for this procedure. And in my opinion, in our opinion here of our team, the only way that you can give these people the quality of the work that, that our clients want and come here for is to have the team like we have all in one physical mm -hmm. facility. Yeah. Um, and this is our physical location in the Lakeland office, just so you can see you know, how large this facility is and you know, why it takes you know, a whole village to, to complete these procedures every day. All it right. really does. Right. Um, so we are going to jump into our patient testimonials. So we love to show our, you know, talk about our patient stories and how it's transformed their life. Um, so London, 
he had, um, his adult teeth never grew in. So he wore a snap-in smile during his childhood, um, which did not function well. He had a lot of embarrassment growing up. So we're going to hear about his story and, and what life looks like for him now. There's no fear now. These teeth are so strong and durable that I don't really worry now. It just was nonstop hospitality. You wouldn't have thought you were at a dentist, I'll tell you that. You would have thought you were at a five-star hotel. So I first found out I had a problem uh, with my teeth at around third grade. And then I started to lose teeth around fourth grade. I was in the cafeteria and I took a bite out of my cheeseburger and my teeth just came right out into the cheeseburger. And in front of my friends was this little insecure kid. Being that insecure and self-conscious will affect you in so many different ways. Emotionally, physically, everything. It will affect you and it will change you. And I went to dentist after dentist after dentist and they told me, you know, I'm sorry, we can't help you. We, we've been to many and never have I ever experienced anything like I've experienced with new teeth now. The first time I met Dr. Richards, I had my doubts. I walked in there knowing that he's probably going to say, you know, I'm sorry, we can't help you. But he didn't do that. He looked at me and he reminded me of how many patients that he's done with bone loss and he assured me that he could get plenty of implants in with plenty of support and it wouldn't be an issue. He made me feel so secure. I only met the man one time and knew that this is where we were going to go and who was going to perform this procedure on him. And I almost felt like I was in a dream. Like This is exactly what I've pictured ever since I was young. And he really just made me feel comfortable and just believe that you know it's possible for me. From my perspective, you'll get traditional implants in the front and you'll get some zygomatic implants in the back. We did one just about like this yesterday. You'll have a set of fixed teeth this afternoon without any bone grafting. You will not have to take those teeth in and out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Oh, I don't even it feel like crazy. I'm looking at me. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so insane. Oh wow, I don't even know what to say. I just feel like there's a different person in the mirror. The biggest part about these is not being able to take them out, not having something like them come out. Because there's so many times in my life where, you know, they've almost fallen out, or, and, you know, it's, it's, I mean, that's all gone. You know, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. You know, I don't have to hide anything. Sign of relief, joy, uh, all the heartbreak and the heartache left in a sense. And all I felt was just gratitude. This is always what I pictured that there was going to be somewhere I'm going to go when I'm old enough, when I'm 18, and I, they were going to completely do my teeth and make the smile exactly how I imagined. And now that I have my teeth fixed, I feel like I have so much ahead of me. First things first is college, because this whole entire time I've been doing online classes up until I got my teeth fixed. And so I get to go into college with confidence and, and take my classes and make new friends and not have to worry about that. I can go to the basketball court and play basketball without any issues and, and not have to worry about them falling out, not have to put some type of glue that's super hard to clean out at the end of the day. Um, this one is a really big deal. I went on a roller coaster the other day. I made sure to just smile through it and have my mouth open and just like let myself live like a little bit. And that's one of the biggest things, just that new confidence and not have, having to worry about them falling out and just experience life at like my fullest. Our mission at New Teeth Now is to help patients overcome severe long-term dental problems. We've helped thousands of people regain their health, happiness, and confidence and we can help you too. The teenager I knew had now suddenly blossomed into a confident, happy, secure young man. New Teeth Now really did like change my life completely and I just have so many plans for the future, so much hope again and that's something I'm so excited to explore. Really. So London, you know, he just doesn't have to hide anymore and he can completely be himself and it's really incredible to see, you know, that change in starting his, you know, adult life. So it's absolutely awesome.
Um, we did have a few questions come in, so we're going to go ahead and, and answer those now. So the first couple, um, what happens when I wake up? Is there a lot of pain? When you wake up, there's zero pain because once a person is asleep, we administer a long-acting local anesthetic, which is called Marcaine. And then at the end of the procedure, I inject a longer acting local anesthetic called Expirel around the incision lines. And this is a time release Marcaine that lasts up to 36 hours. So the answer to the question is no. When you wake up, you're not in pain um, because of those reasons. Yeah. How long before I could eat or drink? Well, you need to be awake first. <laughs> and usually two and a half, three hours, you're able to drink some clear liquids and take pills. Uh, in terms of eating, it would probably be the next day before we would want you to do any chewing because there may be some lingering numbness in your tongue and lip and chin region. Now, I don't use that 36 hour Marcaine local anesthetic to do a nerve block. A nerve block is what numbs your tongue and lips and chin and all that. So the long acting local is just put along the incision lines. It's the regular Marcaine that wears off after about six to eight hours. It's in the nerve, nerve blocks. So the nerve blocks numb you, that wears off in six to eight hours. So you'd be able to start eating soft food the next morning. Perfect. Um, and then Last one for now is, how long does it take to heal fully from surgery? Fully. Well, the definition of fully could be many things. Before you can get your final, final, final zirconia teeth made, we want you to heal for five months. Uh, but most people at the end of a week, or certainly at the end of 10 days to 14 days, are back to resuming normal activity, normal work activity. If you work out at the gym, you could, you could be doing that uh, certainly in about 10 to 14 days. But fully healed before the implants have osseo-integrated with the bone and are ready to accept the final teeth where you can eat any food you want to, it's gonna be about four months. Yes. Um, and we had a, another one come in really quick. Do the extractions include wisdom teeth? Yes, if, if it's necessary. Now, you have to understand that the age group for these procedures is typically 60 and up. And occasionally, we will find a person in that bracket who comes in for a consult, and they'll have an old wisdom tooth that's down in their jaw or up in their jaw that's been there all these years and the bone around it is healthy, and it's deep down in the jaw, and it might be close to the nerve, and we leave those. So just because the wisdom tooth is there doesn't mean it has to come out if the bone around it is healthy. Perfect. Um, so we're gonna learn a little bit about the differences between traditional implants and um, zygomatic implants. So here's a scan of the traditional sides implants. Um, and can you explain, you know, a typical patient that would need these? Well, the, the typical person, uh, I don't know that there is a typical <laughs> person anymore. <laughs> uh, lately, it just seems like we've been placing a lot of zygomatic implants. Mm -hmm. And so that's the typical person lately hasn't had much bone in their upper jaw for some reason, I don't know. It's just like, you know, I have to get the farmer's almanac out and see where the signs are. But uh, there are traditional implants and the longest traditional implant, somewhere around 18 millimeters. And that usually gets the job done in traditional placement, uh, tilted implants in the upper jaw, tilted implants in the lower jaw, regular traditional placement. The zygomatic implants, the only difference between a zygomatic implant and a regular implant is the length. It's the same material, the same threads, 
the same head that all the different pieces attach to. It's just the link because it has to reach out to the cheekbone. The zygoma, Z-Y-G-O-M-A, zygoma is this bone. It's a zygomatic implant because it goes from the skinny little upper jaw to the zygoma. Therefore, it is a zygoma implant. There might be one zygoma implant on each side or two zygoma implants on each side. And so zygoma implants for the last 16 years have been our answer to giving people teeth who have no bone in the back of their upper jaw. Let me just say that again. Zygoma implants are the answer for people who have no bone in the back of their upper jaw. We don't use them in the lower jaw. Zygoma, it's the upper. Typically when you have a itty bitty little skinny ridge, it's zygoma. If the sinus comes way forward, it's zygoma. It's a no bone graft. It's an easy implant to place. I may have, Dr. K and I together may have done 5,000 of these things. I, I mean, we lost count. Each week, Dr. Kirkpatrick and I will each place maybe eight or 10 zygoma implants, okay? They go from the jawbone to the zygoma bone. They're safe. Don't ever let anybody tell you they're not safe because we do them all the time. And I will tell you, I've been doing this long enough to where if there were problems with zygoma implants, I wouldn't be doing them mm -hmm. because I would have to deal with all those problems. And I don't want to deal with problems. I want to deal with successes. And so zygoma implants are our answer for these people who, who are told they don't have any bone mm -hmm. because you got bone. You got bone for zygoma implants. So this picture shows traditional implants that are tilted, tilted to avoid the sinus, tilted to avoid the lower jaw nerve. These are not zygoma implants. We have other pictures like this one where this long thing goes out towards the cheekbone. That is a zygoma implant combined with traditional implants. If there's enough bone in the front, and no bone in the back, you get traditional implants in the front and zygoma implants in the back. It's easy peasy. Mm -hmm. I wish that I could have the ability to express to you people how simple this is, what we do every day, how simple it is. And if you break it down into its components, you know, there's the extraction of the teeth component. There's the general anesthesia component. There's the placement of the implant component. There's the taking of the impressions, the selection of the abutments. All of these individual components are simple. But you got to do every dang one of them right or it don't work. At the end of the day, if you don't do every one of those things right, at the end of the day, when you go to put the teeth in the person's mouth, they won't fit. Mm -hmm. This shows zygomatic implants, and you can see they're very long. We use those a lot. The left picture is a quad zygoma. That's for a person who has no bone in the front and the back. And so we put zygoma, zygoma implants in the front and the back. Some people have a little bit of bone up in the front where we can sneak a couple of traditionals with their quads. I mean, if you can do that, it's icing on the cake. Most people don't have that. Most people have the left picture where there's no bone in the front for traditionals. Occasionally we run into a person that has the right, the picture on your right where there is a little bone in the front but that's rare. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing quadzygomas, that's a person who's probably come here from Lord knows where across the country because they've been told they don't have enough bone for implants. 
I just saw a guy from uh, New Jersey and his dentist sent him over to Temple to get some implants because he didn't have any bone. And the people at Temple said, you know, you need zygoma implants and we don't do them here. You better find you somebody that does zygoma implants. Yeah. So he came down here and I, I put quad zygomas in. So he was having a little bit of a problem with his bite and I said, well, why don't you go see your dentist who originally referred you over to Temple? So he did, and that dentist got mad at him because he had come to Florida. And he said to the dentist, what? look, you sent me to Temple. Temple yeah. sent me to Florida. Yeah, finding you know, the best You know, so care. it's crazy. We hear all kind of crazy stories, but we also see people from all over the place. And every week, Dr. K and I are doing people, we're doing these procedures on people, typically zygomatic procedures on people who are not from Florida. Mm -hmm. They're from everywhere, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, everywhere, all over the place. It's just incredible. How many oral surgeons did they fly over in that jet to get to Tampa, Florida or Orlando? Hundreds. They flew over hundreds of oral surgeons to come to Florida and they did it for a reason. It's because we're the place to come to in the entire country because we do more of this than anybody. I couldn't have said better myself. I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, but it's the truth. It is the truth, definitely. Um, so if you have bone loss, if you're having dentures and you've been turned away, you need to come see us, 100%. Um, so this is Dr. Richard's team. Um, these are the ladies that you will meet and you know see at every appointment when you visit and they also have a tremendous amount of experience. Um, so they work so well together and they're just great ladies. They're better than great. <laughs> they are. They <laughs> they're are. excellent. Yes, they are. Um, and then we already have, we've already mentioned anesthesia, but um, we put all of our patients under general anesthesia. We have really experienced um, nurse anesthetists, um, CRNAs that work with us. So they're focused on anesthesia, so our surgeons can focus on the actual procedure. And this is our restorative team in the Lakeland office. So we have Dr. Nofala, Dr. Dibbs, and Dr. Sorrento, um, and they will help you, you know, design the look of your teeth, you know, fit them, make sure they fit right, fix any of, you know, bite issues, things like that. So um, they're, they're on the side of, you know, the function for the actual uh, prosthetic teeth. And we're gonna hear a bit um, from Dr. Dibbs and the dental lab and how great it is that um, they're both able, you know, the lab and the restorative team can work so closely together. One of the things that really sets Florida Dental Implants apart from uh, other offices that are doing full mouth implant reconstruction, I have my own laboratory here on site that myself and the other restorative doctors are able to use. This is invaluable. Having the ability to work so closely with my lab gives me the ability to better help my patients with the emotional side of it as well. A large number of the patients that, that come to us for treatment have had severe dental problems for many, many, many years, sometimes dating back to childhood. Because of the emotional concerns that they have, we really have to spend the time with the patient. That You can't rush anything. We need to have ample opportunity to have questions asked and answered. Having my own laboratory here on site, this is invaluable, not only in terms of having the control over the quality of the product that we're making, but the ability to, if I've got a question with the patient about can we make this change, is this going to be feasible, I can go across the hall, get one of my lab technicians, and all of my lab technicians have been doing this for many, many years, bring them across the hall and they can talk to the patient themselves. So we eliminate the need for me to try to interpret the patient's concerns and questions and needs in a phone call or in a note, they can speak directly to the patient. It was so important to me to have everything under one roof. There's no waiting. That is the advantage of having the lab on site. And they are so proud of their work 
that they come out to see the product. These are not regular people with regular jobs. These are master artisans that create. They truly are artists and they're creating beautiful smiles. It's like nothing I've ever experienced and I don't know of any other office that's like this. And this is our incredible lab team that, um, you know, creates every single teeth, every single prosthetic um, device. <laughs> um, and we did have some questions come in, really good questions. So we'll go ahead and go through some of those. Um, so when we talk about final teeth, why does the patient have to have a temporary set? What's the difference between temporaries and finals? Why do they have to have a temporary mm -hmm. set? Because they want to have teeth in their mouth during the four or five months of healing. They don't want to wear a denture, for golly sakes. Yeah. I mean, that thing would be flopping around and painful. So we make a set of screw-retained provisional teeth. Screw-retained provisional teeth that we put into the person's mouth on the afternoon of the procedure. They're acrylic, they're temporary. Now, we can make a second temporary. Sometimes uh, we don't nail that first set of temporaries dead on the money. Maybe the midline's a little off. Maybe the teeth are down too far or up. Maybe the bite's just not right. So we have the ability, because we have our own lab, to make a new set of temporaries pretty quick if we need to. And that's a really nice uh, thing to be able to do uh, now, there's going to be some swelling and shrinkage, and so we want all of the shrinkage of the tissue, the hard and soft tissue, the gums, the gums, to go away. Sometimes gaps will open up under the temporary teeth near the end of healing. And so then when the final teeth are made, a lot of that is done virtually, and all of the gaps are filled in so the teeth conform to the contour or the soft tissue line and they fit, fit very nice. So the reason that we make temporary teeth is the person has a comfortable, good-looking set of teeth to wear during the healing and then that is a fixed reference point. So a person, let's say, is wearing a set of teeth and they've worn them for four months. You know, they've had a chance to test drive them, so to speak. Then when they see Dibs or Nafala or Sorrento to get the final teeth made, they can say, you know, based on this database, this, this line, this datum line that I'm wearing on this fixed reference point that I'm wearing, I want you to do this with the teeth maybe a little bit or make them a little wider or bring them up a little bit or I'd like the teeth whiter, skinnier, rounder, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then our restorative dentist has that fixed reference point. And a lot of times, even at the end of healing, our restorative dentist will make another set of temporaries to incorporate the changes before going to the final zirconia teeth. Now, some people think we just pull these zirconia teeth out of a drawer. Mm -hmm. It takes three or four days. The manufacturing process for a set of zirconia teeth is three or four days. So we don't want to do that. And then the person go, nah, I don't think so. You know, we need to make another set. Well, we like to do that in temporary material first. So I hope that answers that question. Yeah. Um, and then kind of going off of that, for the per permanent teeth, how, how does that process work? She was asking about um, if it's like if you're under anesthesia again. No, you're only under anesthesia for the procedure at the beginning. There's no shots required later on or any anesthesia later on <clears throat> because all of the components are above the level of the tissue. It's too technical to really, you know, without something for you to see, but you have the implants, the abutments, and the teeth. And so when the teeth come out, you've got these titanium pieces that are sticking up through the gum and that's where the impressions are made, that's where the teeth screw down, and so there's no further anesthesia after the original anesthesia. 
Perfect. So yeah, it's very, it's painless. You just take the teeth out and put the new teeth in. Like yeah, so. I mean, they unscrew the six yeah. screws. I mean, typically There's we no place... There's no surgery or anything like that. Correct. Yeah. I mean, we place six implants in the upper jaw and four, five, or six in the lower jaw. And so there would be that many little screws that screw the teeth down to the abutments. And the abutments are in the implants. Perfect. Um, and then what, is, what does maintenance look like after you get your finals? What is it, what's daily you maintenance? You know, maintenance looks like a water pick and toothbrush with toothpaste. Yeah. Looks pretty. It's fairly simple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it, you know, taking care of natural teeth, very similar to taking very care similar. of these. Very similar. And then a yearly checkup to check all the parts and pieces, make sure everything's tight. Yearly checkup, check the bite, check the home care. If you are thinking that you do this and you never have to go to the dentist again, you better rethink it because there is maintenance, just like with anything else. You know, if you put this kind of investment in a car, you're not gonna go run the engine out of oil. And so you put this kind of investment in your mouth, you're gonna take care of it. We're gonna help you take care of it. We're gonna teach you how to take care of it. And we're gonna set you up appointments to come in so we can make sure you're taking care of it. Yes, um, and you don't have to come here for cleaning. So we just got a quick question in on YouTube. If you have your dentist, they can perform cleanings as well. So either or, if you're close by, you can come to us. If not, we can you know, find you a dentist or if you have a dentist that can do the cleanings. Yeah, the teeth are cleaned outside of the mouth. Mm -hmm. The teeth are unscrewed. The little screws that hold the teeth to the abutments are loosened and removed. The teeth come out, they're cleaned in an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, there's little pressure cleaners. Um, we have like a micro pressure washer, ultrasonic cleaner, that kind of thing. So yeah, the teeth are cleaned outside of the mouth. They're not cleaned by a hygienist who's picking around on them with mm -hmm. something. Yeah. So they're cleaned outside the mouth. We have to take them out so we can check all the little parts, the abutments. Make sure they're tight, put everything back together, tighten it all up and fill the screw holes with light cured filling material. Yes. Um, and then, and then you're on your way for twice, a year. Yeah, you know. Twice a year, um, we recommend that. So I do like this visual um, to kind of show uh, the difference between zirconia, the zirconia final teeth and the acrylic temporary teeth. So um, some like businesses, they place the acrylics um, as the finals. Um, and you'll see here, so both of these sets of teeth have been worn for five years. The top set that you see is the zirconia. Um, they look brand new, they're nice and shiny, and they look healthy. The bottom set is the acrylic set, and they have absorbed, you know, stains over the years. They, you know, they just don't, they look old. They look like they need to be replaced. Um, and so that's really the quality difference that you're getting with zirconia teeth. When they come out and are clean, they're back to brand new when they're put back in. Um, and they're, they're designed to last the rest of your life. Yeah, let me make one comment about that too. A lot of the acrylic teeth are handmade. They're made out of denture acrylic material and individual denture teeth. So these denture teeth are set into this acrylic material. And so you could bite on something and the tooth could pop out of the plastic. Exactly. So, Zirconia teeth are milled out of a solid block of material. So for those of you watching who understand how a computer software can talk to a CNC milling machine and you can chuck up something, some, you know, automobile parts are milled. I mean, lots of stuff is milled and these teeth are milled. So those teeth that you see on those zirconia uh, teeth, they're the ones sitting on top. Those are not individual teeth that are glued into place. That entire piece is milled out of a solid block of material to look like that. And then of course the technicians bake porcelain onto it for the color. These are our implant coordinators. So if you decide that you wanna come into Lakeland and um, have a consultation, you'll be meeting with one of these wonderful ladies and they will take you step by step through the whole process. Um, and really, you know, go over any other questions you have, just start that process um, a little bit more in depth. And then for our consultation, so it's about a one hour appointment. 
we will take a CT scan and develop a treatment plan. So you'll leave here knowing exactly what would be happening on the day of surgery. Um, and you also meet with Dr. Richards in person as well if you have any questions for him. So really that's, that's the next step. If you're ready to take that step, please give us a call tomorrow. Um, we are ready to get you scheduled. Let me just yeah. jump in yeah, here. Yeah. We have not had a question about general anesthesia. And so I hate to end the night without offering to the viewers, if any of you have questions about anesthesia, to type them up. I may, I may ramble on for a minute or two about anesthesia, particularly for out-of-town people. So if you're talking to Maura or Debbie or Shauna and you're interested in coming down, like I saw a fella today from Virginia and I'm doing his procedure on Thursday, before he and his wife came down yesterday, he had seen his physician at home. He had, all of his lab work was done, his EKG. He had seen his personal physician. He got a clearance for general anesthesia, a medical clearance for general anesthesia. Almost everybody that we do these procedures on are in the age bracket that they're on some kind of medicine of some sort or have had some procedure, maybe a stent, very common in the heart. And so just about every person that we put to sleep here has a medical clearance, cardiology, pulmonary, what, what have you. Now, if you're a 38 year old person, you have no prior history of anything, you don't smoke, you have normal exercise tolerance, then we get labs and that's it. We don't need a formal medical clearance. But for most people up in their 60s, 70s and 80s, we need a medical clearance to put you to sleep just to make sure that everything's okay. Any other questions about anesthesia? Um, yeah, we got one. Yeah. Is the anesthesia intravenous? Or is okay. that IV sedation, I think? We do general anesthesia. An IV is started and a person is put to sleep. In the old days, it was sodium pentothal. Now, it's the white stuff, the Diprovan. That puts you to sleep, but it only lasts about eight or 10 minutes. So after you're asleep, a breathing tube is inserted through the nose and down into the trachea, and then that is connected to an anesthesia machine that delivers something that you breathe called sevoflurane in combination with oxygen. And so the person is initially put to sleep with an intravenous agent, but maintained asleep with a inhalation, a breathable gas. We are doing full-blown general anesthesia. The airway is protected. All these little parts and pieces, nothing can drop down your throat, you swallow it, and breathe it into your lungs. Everything's protected. With general anesthesia, we can move ahead and get these procedures done in three and a half to four hours. To do these under IV sedation is kind of a nightmare, really, for everybody, the surgeon and the patient. So uh, general anesthesia is the way to go. And you know, we get yeah. clearances on everybody. And, and if there are any other questions about anesthesia, I can answer those for you. Perfect. Um, and this is just a visual of what um, a person's treatment plan or CT would look like. And that's how Dr. Richards would go through everything, you know. And wh why do we do a 3D scan? What's the importance of that? Well, these CT scans, they're like taking a picture of your jaws from different angles, from the side, the top, the back, the bottom. And so we can assess everything. We can assess the sinuses. We can assess the width of the bone, how the depth of the bone and in some cases even look at the density of the bone. So the CT scans uh, really are um, necessary. They are the state of the art. They are what you need to have to fully assess someone, to be able to sit with someone and tell them what I am able to do and what I am not able to do. And I can do that with a CT scan.
perfect. Um, and then I'll kind of go over the, just a simple overview of what the process would look like. Um, so, you know, a patient would come in for a consultation, they'd have that CT scan. If they decide, hey, I want to move forward with treatment, um, then we will have you in for a pre-op and impressions appointment um, where you'll also be designing your temporary set of teeth. So you'll be working with one of the restorative doctors. Um, then you'll have your day of surgery. And then you'll have follow-up, so um, several post-ops during that healing period to make sure everything's healing properly. And then after your implants have healed, we will create the final teeth um, and place the finals. And you know, ongoing maintenance for the remainder of, of your lifetime, um, but really that's kind of the bro that broken down process for you. Um, and then Kim, we're going to hear from her. She had periodontal disease and missing teeth, and she was very careful, you know, how she smiled, when she smiled. So um, it's really incredible to see the change in her life, and we're going to hear from her now. Thanks to New Teeth Now, I have 100% confidence in talking to people and meeting new people. It is definitely Disney World for adults down here. There's so much to do and there's so much interaction with people. When you feel good about yourself and you have nothing to hide, your social life and your social existence is so much more valuable to you. Kim and I have been married for, uh, it'll be 32 years in a, in a month. For as long as I've known her, she has suffered with these periodontal disease. So I was constantly um, had issues with my teeth. Slowly but surely, my teeth still started to deteriorate and fall out. You could see that I had missing teeth. I always had to keep in mind that I shouldn't be smiling too wide. I didn't want people to see that I didn't have teeth in the back of my smile. There are certainly times that I could see it on somebody's face, you know, they're, they're thinking to themselves in their mind, why is she missing teeth? It was very embarrassing because I knew that I had to research and come up with a permanent solution. I wasn't going to fool around anymore. I didn't want partials. I didn't want bridges. So one day I saw a commercial on TV, get new teeth in one day. I thought to myself, well, you know, it's worth a shot going in and, and doing a consultation. Before I left, I had made up my mind that that's what I was going to do. I was going to have it done by Dr. Richards, and I was going to go to New Teeth Now. At New Teeth Now, we've helped thousands of people regain their health, happiness, and confidence. And we can help you, too, in just one day. So I think the whole process wasn't more than four hours. I was thrilled. I had a new set of teeth. They were absolutely amazing. And we went home. I did not have to take a pain pill, not one pain pill. It was amazing. Just think about having one tooth pulled out. I remember having teeth pulled out and experiencing a lot of pain. But Dr. Richards was right. I did not experience that much pain. I told my husband, we're gonna go out and I'm going to have my filet mignon. And um, it, was, it was a memorable meal. It was delicious. She's definitely, you see her more confident. She smiles bigger now than she was smiling before. And right now, her, her teeth look fabulous. They're permanent in her mouth. It's just a wonderful solution. I just, I couldn't think of a better solution than what she's going through now. I'm thrilled, I'm thrilled with it now too. And look at the beautiful smile she has. <laughs> Yeah. I just wanted to really thank Dr. Richards. He really gave me the confidence to move forward with having this process done. And everything that he said he could do, and everything that he said would transpire has happened, and I couldn't be happier. So Kim is doing amazing. She's fully confident. Um, meeting and talking to new people is, is easy now. So it's really awesome to see that change for her. Um, and we have a couple other patients as well. So this is Bruce. He's from Orlando. He had a lot of pain, um, dental pain, and, and he couldn't eat the foods that he loved. 
but after the procedure, now he can eat anything, um, and that's been the biggest change for him. And then Nathan had um, in incessant pain, like it would not go away, um, and so it really hindered his quality of life. Um, but now he feels like he has his life back, he has so much more so much energy now and feels younger and these are what we consider to be our six key differentiators um, for the procedure um, and so we've really discussed all of these pretty well in detail today mm -hmm. um, but did. you know board certified oral surgeons our experienced team the general anesthesia um, all under one roof zygomatic implants and the zirconia final teeth. So if you do decide, hey, I want a second opinion, a third opinion, you know, you're doing online research, really keep in mind these key factors because these are what like sets us apart and they're super, super important. Um, and I think, well, before I go into pricing, well, we had a couple uh, last minute questions come in, so we'll okay. answer those. Um, so th this patient asked, have you ever, ever had someone that you could not complete in one day? No. All right, that was easy. Easy that was answer. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, when getting surgery, does the patient can the patient come by himself, or do they need an adult with them? No, we have quite a few people that come alone, and uh, they usually get a hotel room down here. We, you know, we keep them. Most people by five thirty, six o'clock at the end of the day, they're pretty much awake. Over the years. In the last 10 years, I've actually taken a couple of people home with me that I didn't feel comfortable leaving them alone to go down to the courtyard. <clears throat> and so, uh, but yeah, the answer to the question is yes, we have quite a few people who come alone, like they get up the next morning and drive themselves home to St. Pete or Clearwater mm -hmm. or, you know, not like drive back to Atlanta or anything like that. I don't think we've ever had that, but uh, certainly locally. But yes, the answer to that is yes. So we are so um, happy that you've joined us tonight. Um, we thank you for tuning in this whole time. And we're, I really just encourage you, if you have any follow-up questions and if you're feeling like you're, you're ready to schedule, please give us a call tomorrow. We'd be so happy um, to take care of that for you and get you started on your new journey.